everybody. This is Edwin the Magic Engineer, and I'm back at Open Booster's hey, place. How's it going, everybody? And what we're going to be showing today, I promised some of you guys that we were going to go over some of his, uh, the uncommons and the commons that he has in his awesome world-class beta graded set. And uh, I did that video a while ago. I'm going to link it right now. That's actually the all the rares in the set is what we showed, but we didn't actually show the uncommons in the comments. So right now in this video, we're going to show the uncommons, and we're going to talk about his collection and stuff a little bit. And there's the man himself. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Here's the amazing cards, and these are all the uncommons in beta. Yeah. And I'll scroll through these real quick so while I'm talking so people can see the grades, pause the video if they want to. So you were telling me that all of these, almost or almost all of them. Almost all of them that we have opened on the show. That is amazing. Um, some of them actually are for, from the box uh, that I opened before the show even started. Oh, that is really awesome. So I remember you telling me that story, that first box that you opened, and then your friend was like, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing by yourself all by yourself? That's crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. So many cards I love here, and I just love playing with them. Okay. You're so, hard to shuffle, though, I have to admit. Yeah, in this kind of form, it's, it's little, a little thick here. Yeah. You know, the graded cases really are thick. I mean, it's... And it's, they're sharp. You can kill people with these things. These little points. Uh -huh. That's the only... The case is what I hate about the Beckett uh, card. I hate this because of these sharp edges. You are the only person I know that actually knows what it's like to actually step on a Beckett graded case. <laughs> yeah, they, don't, they don't break. But PSA, you step on them, they crack. <laughs> Just so you know, the card's fine. No one else like ever knows that. These <laughs> but you break. actually know that. I figured I could wear this in the battlefield. You probably could. Right? And they still bullets will just uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, that's probably not true. Might stop at twenty-two though. Uh huh. But yeah. So yeah, that's that's terrible. So you were mentioning that some of these cards actually did get opened on your show. Yes. Yes. Okay. I know one you were thinking. Yeah, demonic tutor. Here. He's my quad. Uh -huh. He was opened on the show. Um, do you remember what the rare was that came with him? I do not. My memories are shot. If but one if, of you guys remembers, put it in the comments below. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh huh. Um, Sarah, she came out of the box this year. Look at that. Look at that nine five Sarah. That is so nice. Oh, I've got, got a got glare a on, on the it. corners, man. Oh, look it's at just that. Nine point five. It's a nine point five quad plus. Is it really hard to find Sarahs with any 10s? Um, to find hard. You can find them. They're just not listed very often, you know? So uh, we were also talking about something interesting. Some of these cards are just extremely hard to find in a good grade. Yeah, you were telling me about yeah, this one. I have yet to be able to get this out of a pack and have it not be an 8.5. Uh-huh. And he's, he's just always going go. to be low. Um, if you find him... Call me because I want this card. Because eight point five is annoying me. I wonder um, if that's just because of where they were on the print yeah, sheet. Yeah, that's where they're located. It hurts their centering. And, and there was also times where like defect, you know, the geez. Alpha Mock Sapphire has like a little white dot like right here on the card. So I know there's like certain defects that happened on an awful lot of cards as well. Yeah, that's terrible. But be hard to find. And that's that just. And find, finding them for the decent price, that's mm -hmm. the big problem. Okay, so what's your favorite cards out of the uncommons in beta? Uh, well, you always have to grab the Tutor. Right? Yeah, absolutely. That's got to be mean, first. That's, that's first. In fact, that one just... I'm going to look at that one for a second. It looks so good in beta. I always just absolutely love that because you got that dark black original border of beta with kind of like the bubbly effect. That's so good. I love that one in beta. Then I guess my next... Favorites are Thick and Basilisk and Lure. <laughs> now, you guys, you know he is a real lover of cards. When these are the two that he pulls out, like, you know, second on the list for some of his favorite cards ever is Lure and Thicket Basilisk. It's just amazing. You slap this on there and you just go. And if you just have a Lure and, and a bunch of bunch of cards, uh, a bunch of little creatures or something like uh -huh. that, it doesn't matter which one you throw, you can get through. I just love that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the first combos I heard about when I started playing Magic was putting Lure on a Thicket Basilisk. Oh, yeah? Yeah, or uh, uh, the flying one, um, Cockatrice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, the other one. Cockatrice doesn't work as well. 
Okay. You, you, for Cockatrice, you need Blaze of, Blaze of Glory. Okay, so you've got three favorites. All right. So then I would definitely go with Icy Manipulator. Oh, I love the original art, Icy Manipulator. And you can always, you know. Look at that. Say tap that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd tap that. <laughs> and you got to have your singular vampire in your Yes. Yet. Where's Nailing it? There he is. Especially for the end comment section. Yeah, there you go. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that is really nice. Just fantastic. That artwork on that Nettily Nymph, that's Quentin Hoover, I think, right? And if you're going with black, you got to have anime dead. Yep, so cheap. Yep. So good. I've only got one beta, and I love it. All right, and then Sarah, she's just beautiful. Rudy's she's... girlfriend! Yep. Yep. Now, now a planeswalker, apparently. Huh. Wait, what? Yeah. What set is that in? Modern Horizons, the new one. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, I didn't know they did a Sarah Planeswalker. Yeah. I just found out about it, I think, yesterday. Okay, so that's four. That's eight you've got up there. Then Juggernaut, he's my Timmy. Mm -hmm. That's my Timmy card. <laughs> yeah. He's just big. Bumbly, bumbly. Big for cheap. <laughs> Very big for cheap. <laughs> And the number 10 card is... Oh, we got to go Black Knight, White Knight. Okay, so they count uh, as a pair. They count as a pair. Okay, there because we go. Because if you're going to go with you got to go for both. They then would... you put Magical Hack in there. and then These were such on. efficient creatures when the game first began. Because it was 2-2 two, two for 2, but it was protection and, and for a strike. strike. It's it just insane. insane, yeah. And then you enchant him, make him bigger, or you can just, you know... Use uh, I think it's it's, it's uh, I think it's slide of mine. And this one, a very big deal, is abyss proof. And this one, which is a very big deal, is swords to plowshares proof. Yeah. Well. Yes. <laughs> two <laughs> two very commonly played huge removals in the format. Okay, if I was gonna call out my absolute favorites, okay, I agree with a lot of your list. I love the icy, and the Sarah, and the demonic tutor. That's a huge card for me, and the singer. For sure, definitely. And then I would say the Swords to Plowshares. I just love that so much. It's great removal. And you can oh, save yeah. your own self because you can stream your life yourself. With the I hell love that in beta. Or no, no, it's not hell for me. I'm sorry. And then Black Vice and the Soul Ring are way high on my list. And actually, this is funny to people. The, um, the uh, Basalt Monolith. I've always really liked the Basalt Monolith and I've always felt it was That's underplayed. Like antiquities. <laughs> yeah, I like to do put a power artifact on there. Yeah, actually, you guys, one of my favorite things with the Basalt Monolith that I love is like, especially if you do like Mana Drain and you've got all that Drain Mana and you've got that Basalt Monolith sitting there instead of just dumping all this mana into a Mishra's Factor or if like your Suchi dies and then you can dump all that like into like the Monolith and then the next turn you can Brain Geyser for more or Fireball for more. I love that kind of setup. And also... I, I like to look at it as like you put it into play, then use it immediately, and it filters your colors into colorless. Yeah. Which is so, it, and there's some pain there, but not much. You can get by. But then later on, if you ever have a turn where your stuff's untapped, you can charge up that monolith, and then later on put out something much bigger than your mana curve currently allows. So I love that card. So yeah, that's pretty good, I think, for this video. Any final comments? Hippie's always awesome. Hippie. Oh, oh! I forgot. That was one of the ones on my list. I forgot to mention. I'm surprised you didn't say Yeah, that. the Hippie. I That's... figured I'd throw that back out. There. I forgot the Hippie and the Counterspell, for sure. Yeah, you, Way up on my list. Yeah, I could talk about this all day. But we're going to end it here. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.